Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of soldering and get our limit switches ready. Um, these are used to, um, these are pressed down by the perch when a bird lands, so these are the switches that let us know that a bird has arrived at the crow box. Um, we'll need two in this step. I'm going to point out one thing. When you have the roller uh, to the right, as I do now, um, you'll notice that the three pins at the bottom are labeled on the case. There is C over here on the left for common. The middle one is marked NO for normally open, and the one on the right is marked NC for normally closed. Um, we're going to be soldering to the left and to the middle um, pins. That's to the common and to the normally open pins. Uh, before we can do that, we need to get our wires ready. So we're going to use um, two sets of um, male to female DuPont wires. Uh, one set I like to use uh, purple and gray, and for the other set, blue and green. It's not necessary for you to use the same colors, but um, it may be helpful in support if yours are the same color as mine. It just depends. So the first thing we have to do is remove these um, black um, connectors from the uh, black plastic connectors, I should say, from the female ends of uh, each pair of wires. And the way that's done, um, I actually have this really handy tool for this. It's a one millimeter screwdriver bit from my uh, driver set. Um, but all you really need to do is get under this tab, this little black tab here, lift it up until it breaks. And then you can find that it's easier if you choke this down by pushing the connector as far up the wire as you can. That'll give you the biggest space that, to put your tool into here, just like that. And once that black tab is broken, as you see there, this connector will slide right off. So we just want to keep doing that until we have all the female ends stripped of their black connectors. There's still a wire connector in there, there's still a metal connector, which is what we want to get at because that's important for our soldering. If you don't have a tool that's uh, narrow enough to get in here, you may be able to get away with using a fingernail, you may have to find a knife and use that very carefully. Um, but we just need to get all four of those off. Okay, so the next step is to slide one of these onto the NO pin of the switch and the other onto the C pin. That's common and normally open. And you may have to work it a little bit, but you want to get those all the way up just like I did there. And just like here. I'm going to try to make this one good too. There. So you want to push it all the way up so that um, these metal connectors from the wire are pushed all the way against the case of the switch. Now our soldering strategy, and I'm going to use um, helping hands for this. I'm going to clamp this switch into these two gators here. And so I'm going to run my little fan here, this fume extractor, and that's all you're going to be able to hear while I'm soldering. So I'm going to discuss the strategy first, and then, uh, and then I'll do the soldering. So I've got my rosin core solder here, 0.6 millimeter. And so the idea is going to be to take the soldering iron, take my soldering iron and I'm going to heat this up and then uh, put a nice big blob of solder on top of it um, and then I'm going to continue to heat it with the soldering iron until that blob of solder disappears which means it's flooded into the joint and that'll connect that'll solder the um, this connector to the pin that we have it slipped over so I'm going to go ahead and do that now I'm going to turn on my little um, uh, fume extractor which means you won't be able to hear me speak anymore and then I'm going to solder one of these put a big bead on there, maybe you can hear me, and then just keep it heated until that floods away. Then remove my soldering iron and do the other one. Put a nice big bead on there. There. So that's one switch already done. This one's still cooling, hasn't cooled completely yet. But you can see um, I've got nice shiny solder joints there, uh, which means that they were done at the right temperature and that they're uh, going to um, set up nicely. Um, if they are blobby or chunky or not shiny, um, that means that um, most likely means the solder wasn't hot enough uh, when you applied it and uh, will probably need to be redone. Just heat them up again until the solder remelts and, and cools uh, to a nice shiny uh, color. 
And again, I'm going to slide one of these wires. Now it doesn't matter which uh, uh, wire of, of which color goes on which terminal. Um, that's by design. We made this really simple so that you can just put them on however you see fit. Just want to make sure these get slid on all the way up the pins of the switch, just like that. And in you go. Okay, get that fume extractor on, and I'm going to flood these two as well. And again, you see we have nice shiny uh, solder joints there. Now I can take my other one, the first one we did that has had time to cool. Just double check that uh, I've got a nice solid, not pulling hard here, just firmly. Just make sure those are on there nicely. And they are. And the second set, they're cool enough to test. Those are also on there nicely. And again, we've soldered in both cases to the C and the NO terminals of these switches. That's the middle and left one when your roller is on the right side of your switch. Um, if you've made a mistake here and soldered to the wrong thing, you can heat these up the same way with the soldering iron and just remove your wire uh, while the solder is still hot. So for the coin sensors we need DuPont wires, um, which is the same kind of wire we've been using everywhere or we're going to use throughout the electronics. Uh, the ends in a gator clip now you can buy these um, from eBay and Amazon uh, and other places. Um, just search for DuPont Gator Clip. Um, so you can buy those or you can make your own if you have uh, loose Gator Clips like this and um, DuPont wire, which we do have. So I'm going to discuss how to um, make your own since uh, you won't have, we don't need to describe how to use the other ones, they just come ready to use. But if you need to make your own, take a male to male DuPont one that ends with a prong on each side of pin and uh, using the same technique we used before we're going to remove the black jacket from one connector like that and we're going to take a gator clip here and just squish it right out of its uh, little rubber um, sleeve and uh, normally you would use a crimping tool for this um, but that's a pretty specialized tool and if you don't do a lot of work like this you probably won't have one so I'm going to show you how you can get away with just using needle nose pliers um, the first thing we want to do is bend these little tabs down by squeezing them gently a little bit and you'll see kind of how one goes over the other here uh, the way they're the way they're designed um, and then just get those to where you can get one down inside and one over the top like that and then leave yourself enough space that you can insert the entire um, DuPont pin like this then, using your needle nose pliers, just sandwich that pin in between those two tabs and squeeze. And you've crimped that, um, but not with um, not in the way that you would need for that to be a good permanent connection. Um, if you have a crimping tool, you can just do this uh, and and let it go like that. But we're gonna have to solder ours, so um, we're gonna go ahead and get this gator clip supported in my my little helping hands here and uh, we're going to use the same technique as before um, where we heat this portion up and we admit solder and we just keep uh, an eye out and watch for that solder to bubble and disappear down into all the cracks and, and solder everything so I'm going to fire up the um, uh, fume extractor and do that
And as you can see, that's a pretty quick process. I didn't do any editing there. Um, and now we have that pin securely uh, um, soldered in place. And if you like, you can uh, put one of these um, little sleeves back on. It's easy. You just run the uh, DuPont wire through the larger end of it and out the back. And then you'll need to clamp this usually to something. I just clamp it to my pliers to keep it open so that you can squeeze that sleeve over and give it a little twist and it should pop right into place. And there you have it. You've made a custom uh, little wire with a male DuPont at one end and uh, a gator clip attached to the other. And as, as I said, these will be used in a coin sensor. So um, if you didn't buy gator clipped DuPonts, you'll need to make two of these. So this one and one more. And then you'll have what you need to build the coin sensor. Now that we've soldered our limit switches to um, these DuPont wire leads, the next thing we want to do is add more wire to make the make them longer so that we can uh, get around more easily inside the crow box. It's easier to make our connections. Um, so DuPont wires come in multiple lengths. This is the 10 centimeter length, which is also about 4 inches long. Um, if you have longer DuPonts, you should use those. Um, if you only have 10 centimeter DuPonts, uh, as I do here, then um, we're just going to have to add a couple of sections to each of these to get them to the lengths we want. So we're going to call one of these the um, near switch and one the far switch. And the only reason we say that is because we need more wire on the one that we call the far switch. So when we get done here, um, we're going to want one of these to have about 9 inches of, of wire and the other to have 14 inches of wire thereabouts. So the way that we do that easily with um, with these DuPont wires, with the uh, 10 centimeter type, is to add, um, to make one have two total segments and the other have three total segments. So I choose to use the purple and gray wire to make the, um, the near um, switch and I'll use the uh, blue and green wire here to make the far switch, which means I'll need two more pieces of blue and green. And this is the female on one end, male on the other. So I'll start with this easy one here. I'm just going to uh, arrange these up and then plug them in, matching the color to the extension lead. Sometimes these are fussy, sometimes it's easier to get them in one at a time. So purple to purple, and then gray to gray. Once we have this plugged in, it's a very good idea to connect them with something other than just themselves. Um, the ideal tool is uh, heat shrink tubing if you have it, but if you don't, good old electrical tape works just fine. Just remember the electrical tape works best when you stretch it as you apply it to keep it under tension. So I like to try to keep the wires in one hand pulled away from the hand with the tape and then just roll. And then just make sure that I've got that pressure on. And every once in a while, renew my grip on this and make sure that I'm applying stretched electrical tape to the pair here. There. So my near switch is done with its approximately 9 inches of wire uh, or two segments of 10 centimeter. And I'm just going to repeat that process here on. Uh, the other switch, except I'm going to add two more. So there'll be a total of three segments of wire sticking off of this particular switch.
last section here. And there, now our limit switches are done. So we have one that has uh, three sections of 10 centimeter uh, DuPont wire, and then we have one that has two segments of uh, 10 centimeter DuPont wire. So one long and one longer. And uh, that's it for the limit switches until we get them installed in the crow box. Now we're going to get the uh, gator clips ready to get them uh, these wires to the correct length for what we need. Um, these are actually factory made in my hands here. These are factory made DuPont on one end, Gator on the other wires. Um, it's possible you had to make your own by soldering. We covered that in a, in a previous step. Um, but we do need to lengthen these because one needs to be a minimum of 13 inches long and the other a minimum of 18 inches long. So um, I'm going to choose to add one uh, 10 centimeter yellow segment to this yellow wire to make it long enough and I'm going to use two segments of 10 centimeter orange, add those to this orange wire to make it long enough. And that procedure is pretty simple. We've been over this. Just uh, push one wire into the other like that and then we're going to use a little bit of uh, electrical tape just to make sure that stays together because DuPonts are famous for coming unplugged. Try to stretch this electrical tape as it's applied. Give it the best possible grip on these things. So, just pinching the tape in my left hand and then pulling away with my right until I feel the tape stretch and then just rolling it together. So, this one is finished. Its uh, length is just about exactly 13 inches. And for the orange one, I'm going to have to add two sections. chain this last section on. And let's see, now my orange wire has three total sections and it is 18 inches long. So now we've finished with our, um, our uh, gator clipped wires for the coin sensor got those to the right length. I'm just going to tie them up like that just to tame them for now. Um, and now we can move on to doing the uh, rest of the wiring and uh, then get our electronics installed.